Hey everyone, this is Ross. Um, in today's video, I want to show you guys some different points of interest around the yard. Some things that I haven't updated you guys on. I've been getting a lot of requests for certain things, like for instance, my mushroom patch, how that's doing. Um, the wine cap mushroom patch that we inoculated uh, in the fall last year. Also the sugar cane. How's the sugar cane doing? I want to show you guys some seedlings that we started in terms of the melons and the uh, the squash and the tomatoes and the peppers and the eggplants. I want to show you guys the garden beds. Um, just talk about various points of interest. Even the, the garlic looks beautiful at this time of the year. It's so far ahead of prior years. This has been a wonderful year for garlic. Um, I also want to show you guys these fig cuttings here that I've rooted only three months ago. I want to show you guys the root systems on some of these. Talk very briefly about the rooting process and how that all went. And I also want to update you guys on the frost that we had. Um, if you're following along with the channel, you know that we had a frost on the 17th of April. Um, it was quite uh, a surprise because of how warm everything has been, even in the winter time, in the beginning of the spring. Um, it was really quite a special year that this was chalking up to be. And then all of a sudden, we started getting very cold temperatures. Um, and then we had another frost that came in on the 9th, the morning of the 9th, and the morning of the 10th of May. And um, those were enough to really drive me crazy. <laughs> and uh, really make me rethink what I've done this year in terms of getting everything out here on the patio as soon as I did. But at the end of the day, this was a very freak occurrence and um, I don't expect this to happen, uh, you know, even in, in the next 10 years. A frost on May, uh, excuse the microphone there guys, a frost on May 10th is just insane um, in this area although not impossible but so what had happened let me just give you a recap is that we protected a lot of the trees out here the figs the pomegranates the persimmons specifically um, everything else was either already protected by some sort of plastic or mesh um, I did also protect the grapevines that was the other thing because the new shoots coming out of the grapevine have those fruits on them um, the other trees like the stone fruits, the apples and the pears, they seemed to be at a level in which they were okay with what was going to come. And we, we actually got down to significantly lower temperatures than what was predicted. Um, on the 9th, it was 32 degrees. And I actually thought the night of the, the, uh, the night of the 8th, preparing for the 9th, I thought, you know what, actually, I don't think I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to have a frost. I think everything actually is going to be fine. We ended up having some snow that came in, um, or at the very least, a lot of water, a lot of moisture. And that coated everything real nicely with some water, and I think created a nice barrier between the frost and how that all works. You know that interaction that you guys have been telling me about for a long time. Run the, spr the sprinkler system um, all night, and you'll end up having trees that get through the frost, right? So I think it had some sort of effect even though it wasn't raining all night. But we did then cover a lot of things and um, it was extremely windy. So a lot of the covers actually blew off and I waited until midnight to actually come out here and cover everything because I knew how windy it was gonna be. Um, I even went around to the Rosianca persimmon. I'd like to show you guys that at some point. Um, and I took a giant tarp, the biggest tarp I had, over a, you know, like a 14 by uh, 8 foot wide tree and tried to cover it with the tarp. And then I tied it down on the bottom and strung it up and made it as tight as I could get it. But where that is, it's just so windy. Um, it's even windier over there than it is in the rest of the yard. So that tarp really just blew off and did a lot of damage to the tree. It actually broke a lot of the stems, the new shoots that were coming out, and uh, I probably caused more damage than um, any frost would have done this year. Overall, the frost had been very mild, That the ones that we did that were late. The one in April actually ended up being the strongest, 28 degrees with a frost. Any fig or persimmon um, or pomegranate that was far enough into the 
the budding out process would have gotten fried. All the figs would have gotten fried um, if I didn't protect them. So it was good that I protected those on those particular date. But on Sunday morning, the 10th of May, it was 34 degrees, predicted 38, a lot lower than what it, it, was, uh, what it should have been. And we did get a very mild kiss of a frost. And I'll show you what, there's signs of it here in the yard. I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, so that's, that's sort of the recap here, guys, with the frost. It's nothing, nothing crazy. Uh, I'm glad that I took the precautions that I did. I'm sure a lot of you guys are as well. But inevitably, I didn't have to even protect anything um, except for the figs, the pomegranates, the persimmons on the 20, um, or on the, uh, the 17th of April. Here's some fig cuttings that we rooted here, guys, only three months ago. Some of them have fruits on them. I didn't take off, I uh, wasn't very attentive, and didn't take off a number of the fruits just yet. They have shoot growth that's not really um, too spectacular, but if the growth is is healthy enough, it has green, you know, really dark green leaves on it, and the new shoots have some hardening up, some lignification that's happening, I know that the roots look really good down below. So I've been slowly adjusting them. This is a new batch of cuttings I took out from underneath the, uh, the grow closet in the house. We adjusted them to full sun. Now they're fully adjusted and they look beautiful. I mean, they really do. Um, I've been very pleased with the results so far this year of the rooting process. I want to take this guy out of the pot and just show you what this looks like. Um, so you guys just have an understanding of just really how great these trees came out. I mean, that is just wonderful. You see a lot of roots that are now hardening up. See how they're turning brown and yellow. Um, and then you have new roots that are developing as well, and those white roots. And those are the feeder roots that give us all the water. They uptake the water, and they uptake most of the nutrients. And this is just an, a very, very healthy tree. These are the kind of trees that you should expect when you receive them from me. Except I imagine because of how late I'm going to be shipping now this year, because of the coronavirus, that um, they'll be even better, even more rooted out than these. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at here and what I've been doing with my trees and planting them and also up potting them into larger pots is this is the size of the tree that I've, I've been dealing with. And this is also the size of the tree that you should be also expecting or, or looking at to then up pot. And this, again, only was three months ago that I stuck a cutting into the soil in these pots. Um, so this is really good proof now, I think, of good results. I have not just this bin here. There's about 100 of these that look just like these now. Um, I have about another 50 to 75 still underneath the... Uh, or in, in the house in the basement. So those are still rooting and they have been rooted um, like two or three months ago. So these are just are far further along and at about that three month mark, this is what they should look like. Now moving forward, you will have some trees that I've already up potted that are in their pots now in five gallon size pots and they've been um, up potted about four months ago. They've been now out, outside for about a month going through all the wind and all the frost that we've had. Um, they've survived and they're looking great. They've dug themselves in really nicely into their pots and they're about to take off. And I expect that a lot of these trees now that are either in this state here um, or in the next state in these larger pots, you can see on this back row here, this is the trees that have been in their pots now for about, or have been rooted now about four months ago. These will get to about six feet tall, I imagine, by the end of the season. You can see they'll kind of look something like these over here by the end of the season. Um, ideally, though, I'm going to grow them as single stem whips. And then the following year, I'll top them at a desired height. And they will um, branch out at the height that I want. Now, here's the uh, indication of frost that we've had here, is that my potatoes are now finally coming up. And I don't know what it is exactly, but they're not looking too great. And I don't know why exactly. Maybe 
they did get hit with a frost maybe they didn't but you can see like what some of this growth looks like is really not all that great you can see how brown and it does look like they got frosted or hit by something because not all of them look like this if i show you guys this one right here this one looks pretty beautiful pretty green pretty lush um, not perfect but definitely not this flimsiness here maybe this is normal but this is my only indication on the yard if any that we had a frost and somehow it got through it looks like now it even got through some of the straw here which is unusual because that shouldn't happen um, i wouldn't expect a frost in this particular spot so maybe maybe it's not a frost maybe it's something else but that's my really only indication so far of a frost now we've set up our garden beds here um this is the big bed that we're going to have some you know heat loving crops in like our corn and our melons and our squash and you'll see that there's one two three four four rows of corn that we'll have in between the rows so in this strip here is going to be something like a melon or a squash and they're going to kind of sprawl out in and around the corn um, even potentially go towards the potato bed once the potatoes come out because um, the potatoes won't be here forever so they can kind of do their own thing and roam around and what you'll see actually underneath this low tunnel that i have that i've set up for this raised bed there's a lot of heat guys a lot of soil temperatures in here this is where the arugula was and we really didn't seed these uh, tomatoes all that long ago but you can see how far along they already have they already are they're showing their true leaves now or the beginnings the heat in this location is insane um, simply because it's a raised bed you can see some more tomato seedlings there and there um, it's a raised bed but also this low tunnel even though we had all these frosts completely did it matter uh, they are doing wonderfully in this low tunnel um, i also have some seedlings that i started because what we're going to do i think today or tomorrow because it's going to warm up is that we actually have some melon seedlings here i'm going to get these for you guys here's the melon melon and squash seedlings that we have that are going to go in the bed that i'm standing in right now and i need to water these in today no big deal but uh, they're getting hardened off really nicely here with the with the sun they have some nice heat because they're underneath this low tunnel uh, they're doing pretty well and they'll be transplanted i don't know maybe in about a week into this uh this bed over here so that's the plan stan um all right let me move on now to the garlic and this is the garlic that we have saved from our own seed this is music and i'll tell you the garlic has never looked this good it's never been this big i think at this point of the season i don't see any scapes in the near future just yet we're still a bit away from having scapes um, at least from what i can tell and they already have some of them have like eight or nine or ten leaves on them which is phenomenal um, i usually have about eight or nine leaves at harvest uh, those are like the best ones so if i can get more leaves a thicker stem as some of these really do have a extraordinarily thick stem um, they're going to be bigger bulbs because of it it's really quite something as you guys can probably tell at this point i've just been overwhelmed so if you have yourself bigger bulbs and you take the cloves the uh, bigger cloves from those bigger bulbs you'll have bigger bulbs in the future so that's kind of how it works and what i did is i chose the biggest of the best and then also we have underneath this low tunnel, I almost forgot, is the sugar cane. And there it is, hiding away in the corner. <laughs> it's not really doing all that much. People keep asking me about it. Uh, these low tunnels haven't been up for really all that long. I think it's been not even a month yet. Um, 
they got set up on April 15th around that date so today is the 12th so it hasn't been exactly a month yet but what that means is that we haven't had the heat I think required for the sugar cane to really wake up just yet uh, so it's either not awake or it's dead and uh, if it is dead it is a lot I could attribute that partly due to the fact that it used to be over here and it was growing in this bed but now we have turned this bed into figs so I, I dug it up in the fall transplanted it into this raised bed covered it pretty nicely in the winter time it did see about 20 degrees Fahrenheit and that was really the low that it saw um, so maybe that was enough to damage it and kill it but ideally and what should happen is that it comes back from the roots now if it doesn't come back it's not the worst thing because I actually have some cuttings that I've planted for my buddy Brian, they're in that bed and those cuttings will come back and you can do that year after year. So if you're kind of afraid, you're worried, oh, well, maybe the plant isn't gonna survive, just get yourself some cuttings every year, um, even from your own sugarcane plant. You plant the cuttings, from cutting, you're gonna get these big plants in just one year. You save yourself some of the cuttings, you could bury them, sort of like potatoes, bury them and they will re-sprout the following year and they'll survive underneath the ground all winter time assuming you don't have any rot and we also have over here just our garden beds that are finally kind of coming along it took a while for things to happen we have the plastic here over top of them and that's not ideal for these cool loving crops because that's sort of what i'm growing is we have things like carrots that always germinate really well for me uh, just because of the method that I use here. It's really, really simple. There's unfortunately a, a bit of grass coming up in these beds. And I think the cardboard, the sheeting that we put underneath this didn't hold up too well. This particular plastic ended up coming off. I have to, uh, to fix this, but you can see things like my radishes and and there's some beets coming up and there's carrots down on this end turnips different things there's um there's broccoli we also have underneath this cold frame is really the big winners of the bunch is the snap pea plants and we've also planted our beans many many different types of beans even on the end here i think i see some of them now are sprouting uh this is a, a particular bean that didn't come up and I had to put down a different bean I don't remember exactly which one it was but ain't that beautiful and the pods guys on these things are just insane here all right I'm gonna pick one for you guys these are the sugar snap peas and they're really good when they're plump you got to really let them fill in the pod let the peas get quite big um, believe it or not the bees do get in here and they can pollinate these um, I don't even have to open this up because there's some small slits that they come in here and they get this. But this is just such a good snack in the fall, in the spring. It really is one of the best. I promise you guys that. If you, you know, there's some of you guys, I've been telling you guys for years to grow sugar snap peas. There's some of you guys out there you just aren't doing it. It's almost too late now, but next year I'm telling you guys, gotta grow them. Must grow. They really are so, so sweet. They're gonna blow your mind. Now, what's been blowing my mind is these, oh my, <laughs> is actually these mushrooms. The wine cap mushroom patch that we inoculated in this bed over here. Put down a lot of wood chips from a, a sycamore that was freshly cut. And uh, when I inoculated this, I didn't think much of it. I didn't think anything would uh, potentially happen. It was a, a gamble. I wasn't sure if I had the right species of tree. I wasn't sure about much, but there is so many mushrooms coming up now that it's insane. Um, they're everywhere 
and they're still a bit immature. At least I think and I hope that these are going to be wine caps. Have to wait and see. They're still quite young, but I just saw them. They just started coming up all over in this bed. I mean all over. Here's one of them right here. And I don't want to eat this just yet because it doesn't really look like a wine cap. But I'm sure it maybe it, it could get bigger and open up like the wine caps do. And they're all over this. I've just now started to see them. And uh, it's incredible how much the mycelium, how aggressive it is in this bed. I'm not seeing any more just yet on this side of the bed, but uh, yeah, I'm overwhelmed. I'm blown away. I'm shocked. And uh, I think that's the most, the coolest thing that's happened in this yard really in the last year uh, is these mushrooms. I mean, I've just been completely blown away by how easy it was. Assuming they are the wine caps, they're not some other species of mushroom. Um, you know, that's just nuts how crazy aggressive they are. And I showed you guys that video where we kind of unveiled the top layer of some of these wood chips and you got to see how thick of a mat of white mycelium it is underneath these wood chips. Um, and that's where the, the mushrooms are growing on. So what I've done is I've actually took some of the mycelium, put it in different areas of the yard, like some of you guys recommended. And, uh, hopefully I can inoculate a large area of my wood chip beds with these, uh, wine cap mushrooms. They seem to do better in full sun as I've read. So maybe that was the key to my success, but, uh, you gotta have fresh wood chips got to have the right species of mushroom and you'll have a good success. So I want to thank you guys here for watching this little update video. There's so much going on back here. I'm so glad that it's going to warm up now because it's been very cold. It's been very windy. The wind's been the worst. Uh, you know, the frost is annoying. The wind has been to the point where I can't even really come out here and film and even spend some time out here. I just don't want to because it's been like 20 mile an hour winds for for days. <laughs> so we're at, that's ending now today and uh, tomorrow is going to be 60 and then it looks like most of the 10 day forecast the temperatures will average 60 between the day temperature and the night temperature is going to be an average of 60 which is exactly what you want for um, for a lot of these things to continue to grow well especially the figs the pomegranates the persimmons we need these warmer temperatures um, so yeah summer's coming here believe it or not and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon all right take care